Player 2, this is Player 1, plugging in. Player 1 is initiating connection. Player 1 is online. Player 1, this is Player 2, plugging in. Player 2 is initiating connection. Player 2 is online. All players have successfully connected. You are now plugged into the Plug and Play podcast. Initiating startup sequence. Thank you for tuning in to episode one, two, three. Nothing? God damn it. Alright, whatever. I am Zach, and alongside me as always is Tim. Welcome, minions. So, Tim, it has been a cold front of a week, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, why don't you talk about what you've been up to this week? Sure. Um, so we had a little bit of snow, which means in our area that everyone freaks out and drives off the road in a fiery explosion. Um, it's yeah, actually we, a great place to like roast marshmallows on their burning corpses. I, I don't know. Would he get like a, what an inch, maybe? Not even that. Like, May, like maybe in, a, in, in the foothills, maybe. Yeah, maybe um, in the foothills. But so that meant uh, my work closed one night, and the kids got two days off of school. Even though there was like nothing on the ground the second day, and I drove to work at normal time and couldn't even do like an easy burnout if I wanted to or a donut. It was like my car gripped the whole entire way, and I was like, "This sucks." <laughs> couldn't even have fun with it. Couldn't even have fun. Well, I uh, while the kids were home, I did put the like, Christmas lights up on the house, um, so that made them happy. It nice. was actually cold though, and like putting the clips onto the lights, like it got really hard to my fingers. Yeah. I couldn't feel my fingers. That really sucked. Yeah, um, it really sucks when you can't feel your fingers. Yeah, I, I don't know what that's like usually. Can't, yeah. It's not fun. No, not very fun. <laughs> so, uh, the other thing that happened this week, really, um, was just got back from my daughter's concert. Oh, yeah? And it was kind of crazy because they combined her grade group with the high schoolers because of the snow. They had to cancel one of the concerts. Oh, weird. Yeah, so there's like parents everywhere. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, she played a little hard out, and it was good, and we just kind of dipped after her part, because they, um... Oh, they didn't make her stay? Well, the high schoolers were starting, like, after that group, and, like, so parents were still coming in as we were there. Oh, shit. Yeah, so we were just like, let's go. So we went. Yeah. You're like, hey, uh, nope, see ya. So yeah, um, that was really the highlights of my week, other than playing games, which we'll get to later. So what have you been up to? Hey, uh, can we take a really quick break, really quick? Sure. Okay, give me one second. We'll be right back after this awesome break. To all those who love to take a break, this is for you. TikTok, TikTok, khal wali fete fully chok 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 chane fully saath ki bicho beat se cheese smile wali break. Bada bad katu kat nag baat rat kadi romal ban shirt pati anke meet bicho beat shortcut me no. Wally break X is equal to Y divided by H2 is a four right angle triangle Newton is greater than larger How old is your case? She's father Teacher teach Beach oh beach Can you repeat the question please? Wally break Bicho bicho thought about the market I'm going to take a dog Take a dog Now say inside and sound Out of reach Beach oh beach Frankly I don't give a damn Wally break Gilly gilly drag money Silly silly chadi gumi Kharbosh keech Beach oh beach Bacho gajao Tali wally break A fold fart Tord taar Moon mein yum 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 Wally break Have a break Have a Kit Kat From Nestle Hey guys, and thanks for holding with us, bearing with us for a moment. Um, Where were we at? Where? What I just finished up my week, and we were gonna talk about what you went up to. Okay, guys. So I start off with the I have heavy quotes here: snow storm. (laughs) And now let me explain this really quick. I was born in I was born in Alaska. I was gonna say like you're from Alaska. This that was supposed to be really. This is bullshit. This is complete bullshit. My coworkers are bullshit, (laughs) and they were like. Oh no, it's snow on the ground. We gotta go. So they left at noon. I decided, oh no, there's gonna be dumb fucks driving out and it's ice now around 3.30. So I left three and a half hours later than them 
And the only reason why I left was because I was afraid of the other idiots that were leaving work. And was I wrong? There was nobody on the freaking road. Everybody must have left, like, super early, like, when the rest of my coworkers left. Because, like, I, like, saw, like, one other vehicle going the opposite direction of me on my way home. Which is super rare. So. Yeah, yeah the, first snow, and, the first snow around here, everybody freaks out. But now we're, we're coming into it again. Yeah, it's going to be worse. And it's so funny because the, the weatherman last night said anywhere between 0 to 10 inches on the valley floor, which is where we are. There's no way. Zero to ten inches. There's so what do I walk into work today? Mm-hmm. We're going to have ten inches of snow tomorrow, one of my coworkers says. No, we're not. I was like, oh, my fucking God. No, we're not. No, we're not. You're an idiot. Go shoot yourself. It's fine. If that actually happened, that would be, like, amazing. If we had ten inches of snow, I'd that, pay her, like, $1,000. I'm un- like, all right. It's unprecedented. Wrong. We've never. I can't. I've never seen ten inches of snow here. I was like, maybe. I could maybe believe on a really rough winter after two days of snow, maybe five inches. So I think we will get something though, and this hasn't happened yet, so I didn't bring it up earlier. But I have tickets for our whole family for Star Wars on Thursday night. And oh, that, of course. And that's like the time where it's supposed to be pretty bad, but we're going, man, because I paid, paid sixty bucks and it's Star Wars, and I really want to see it. Yeah, you gotta go. You'll never get it back in again if you don't go. It's probably true. Probably very true. Um. Other than that, after I braved the snowstorm, I stopped by Tim's house because I was so afraid I needed the break and ended up picking up my early Christmas present from you. Yep. Um, and should I wait to talk about that until our Christmas episode? No, but you can wait till talk about it for our Tech Talk. Okay, I'll wait till I talk about it. Tune in to Tech Talk to learn about my Christmas present, guys. Um, after going to Tim's house, I decided I was really scared of the snowstorm, so I went home. And then I got right back in the vehicle and picked up my wife, and we went and got a Christmas tree. It sounds like you were pretty scared. I was pretty scared. So I did a I did a Yui out in the middle of a huge padded intersection, and uh, why did you do a Yui? I did a Yui, pulled into the tree lot, and picked up a tree. Went home, and we ended up decorating the inside of our house for Christmas that night. Cool. Um, the following day, we went and recorded Until Dawn Chapter 8, so mm-hmm. that is available up at the youtube.com forward slash plug and play gamer. We're almost to the end. I think there's 10 chapters. There's obviously at least 9. But... There's obviously at least 9. Um, did some Christmas shopping. Got that slowly trickling in from amazon.com. I got some more I gotta do on Friday. Um, and then finally to wrap up my week, guys, we went and saw a fantastic beast so tell me what you thought of that i loved it freaking thought of the movie was amazing cool yeah i really really liked it i just really like the cg i like the world of harry potter um and this is interesting because they don't actually show any characters but they mention some people mm-hmm. um which makes me believe if they do another one that we will actually get to see uh some old fan favorites which would be interesting so um I'm interested. I liked it. It was really fun. Um, good movie, date night. And I think you took your kids to see it, so. Right? Yeah. Cool. Um, they loved it. I thought it was okay. Um, I did enjoy it. I thought it was really cool that they pulled off a really good Harry Potter movie without any famous Harry Potter like people, really. Or yeah. big, big name actors, except for, well, you know what I'm thinking of, right? No, I didn't recognize any of them. The reveal at the end? No, I didn't recognize it. All right. All right. We'll, we'll talk off air. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't okay. seen it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, anyways. So, Tim, going from Fantastic Beasts to Fantastic Video Games, what do you got for me? So, I played a lot of stuff, um, mostly from what I got, uh, the codes I talked about last week from the PlayStation experience. I tried out a lot of them. Okay. Um, I just today tried out mother russia bleeds that's from devolver digital and it's a um game kind of like um streets of rage where you it's between one and four players and you're side scroll fighting or Aren't like you supposed to be saying that like in a russian accent by the way no i i can't fake it so i'm not even gonna try um you but it's a, it's messed up like um like your characters like reanimate from the dead basically and they're like shooting up drugs to keep going and it's really hyper violent. There's blood squirting everywhere. Um, you might like it. Um, huh? 
kind of gritty graphics, sort of pixely, but um, it's fun so far. I think it'd be more fun playing with so, a couple more people. If you oh, don't, nice. if you don't have someone else, it gives you a bot. So. Okay. Yeah, the, those games are never as fun with bots as they are with the real people. So. Exactly. Um, and then a really fun game I played. Now is uh, that the game you wanted to uh, play with me? No, that's uh, okay. Wind, Windjammers. Oh uh, right, right, right. So Headlanders um, was from uh, Double Fine. Okay. And this is a goofy game. You wake up in a space station that's like got alarms going off, and you're like this uh, severed head, and this robot like tells you like you need to escape and kind of helps you. And you have this little rocket on the base of your neck, and you can shoot around and um, attach to other robot bodies. And <laughs> That's super weird, Tim. Uh, it's incredibly weird. And at one point, um, you actually detach and attach onto a robotic vacuum cleaner, kind of like your, your Bobby, your Roby. My Bobby? Bobby, yes. Um, and so I put The Bobby a... that went back to Amazon? Gotcha. Yeah, I made a little clip for... Uh, Plugandplaygamer.com for the nice. handbone happy hour. You can nice. see, you can see a Bobby escaping the space station. <laughs> um, I also picked up a PlayStation Four code for an original Hand of Fate, so I was playing a little bit of that, and that was as good as I remember. Nice. Um, I don't know if I'll go all the way through again, but um, it's fun, and I'm better at combat than I was the first time, so that's always nice. And then lastly, I'm reviewing a game called Feist, which is a side-scrolling um, action platform puzzle game you're this little furry fuzzball that's like uh, not very strong and like basically everything's trying to kill it and there's like spiders and then there's big guys that can pick you up and throw you and there's also traps in the environment like if you trip wires that make a log come down and crush you um the, that's cool. the physics are really good in the game so like like rocks will bounce around really well or when you're picked up and thrown you'll be thrown really well and then the game is all in silhouette, so there'll be like a background, um, like color, and then like the main stage and you are all in dark silhouette. So, got a very distinct look. It, it looks sort of like uh, Limbo, but um, more colorful, and it's not as plodding as Limbo. It's very fast. You've got to move really fast. You've got to uh, jump in there and get stuff done, or you'll get squashed. You can't just hang around. You've got to kind of commit to whatever you're doing. Huh. That's really cool. So I think I'm about halfway through that one. Um, but not sure. And then the last game I bought today, because uh, it was on sale for 99 cents from uh, our friends at Tiny Build, um, it's a mobile game called Divide by Sheep. And it's a puzzle game about math, but you don't always realize you're doing math when you do it. So you got to get these animals onto a boat to escape, and they jump from island to island, and the islands will have like maybe four spots. But you'll have like six sheep, and the huh. sheep. So two sheep will fall in the water, or on the four spots there'll be two wolves, and they'll eat two of the sheep. So you only have two sheep left. So you've always got to be figuring out how many sheep will actually get to the boat, and kind of adding from different islands to get the right total that you want. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, it's on sale for ninety nine cents on Steam and um, Android or iOS today, and I thought I'd go ahead and pick it up because that's one of the games I haven't played. And somewhere in Trinidad, we have a, a plushie of Divide by Sheep, so I just thought it'd be fun to see what the game was all about. Yeah, I think I blew really hard for that, and somehow I did not end up getting it. I know. It's a shame. You know those damn Trinidad people. Gotta watch them. Gotta Sorry, watch that, it. that really blows. That... <laughs> Touche, motherfucker. Alright, what'd you been playing? Alright, guys, so this week I've been playing Ocean Horn, um, which Tim actually ended up picking up for me. Um, and I started it out and went to the first island, and I am loving it. So I explored a little bit. I spent probably like a good like hour on the very first island, and then realized, oh, I don't think I can go very much further. And then when I left the island, it was like 2% explored, and I was like, well, fuck that. I guess I could have gone a lot longer. Um, so I guess I gotta go back there at some point, or maybe... Have you beat that game, or have you just played it? I something? haven't, actually. I, I started it up and then got distracted by something else. I, gotcha. bet I have it on Steam. You have it on PSN. Yeah. Um, and I have it on Steam, too, actually, I found out. Oh. After everything was done and said, and I just never played it. Well, good. Uh, yeah. So, but I'm. it's definitely a console game for me, so that's awesome. Cool. Um, Super Mega Ball Baseball as well, and um, that game's a lot of fun. 
I'm enjoying that. It's just quick, easy, sit down for like 20 minutes, call it good, turn it off, go to another game. Um, Does that version also, have the full nine innings or is it less innings? Um, I think that you can do nine innings. I have it set to five. Cool. Yeah. Um, I was glad the demo was only like three to five innings, one or the other, because I was like, if you remember last week, the sequel is the game I was really sucking at. Yeah. Um, I also played some Hands of Fate, um, and it was a lot of fun. So I also need to give a shout out to uh, Grace over at uh, the PR company for Hands of Fate. Um, she ended up sending me over a code for Hands of Fate Two. What? So yeah. What? Right. I don't even have that. Wait, what? Hand of Fate Two. Oh wait, there's a Hand of Fate. Yeah, hey, Hand of Fate Two's not even out yet, but. Oh, uh, never mind. Damn. So, sounds like thanks, we Grace. Have a... <laughs> we have an extra giveaway, guys. That's all good. Still, thank you, Grace. Yep, thank you, Grace. I got excited because the email that was attached to was info on hands of fate two. Gotcha. So I thought that's what I was getting. Lame. So <laughs> I had a lot of fun with hands of fate. It was a good game. I played uh, through the first. I think they call it champion. Uh huh. Um, and I don't know how many champions there are. But I have a feeling that like every night I could probably just plug away at a champion and eventually beat it pretty quickly. I think. Yeah, that's about a good chunk of play time to do actually. Okay. So you, so, uh, yeah, you can see how many there are actually. It's in the cabinet, so you can just look. No, down. that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was really cool. I really liked it, and it seemed really fun. So. And now you we'll see, see why I was so excited to meet the voice of the dealer, right? Yeah, the dealer is like the most epic voice ever, and by the way, if you didn't listen to last week, here's his voice again. Welcome to the Plug and Play Podcast. See? He's fucking awesome. And he makes the game, like, he makes the game. Like, it is he's talking so... to you the whole time, he's like, kind of egging you on, sort of. Yeah, he's just agging you on the whole entire time, and he's like, oh, in like little smirky comments, and uh... But, like, enough kindness in there that, like, makes you want to keep going. You're not just like, ah, fuck this guy. Like, uh, it's a lot of fun. I really like that game. I'm surprised I didn't play it before. But also kind of not surprised because it's not a game that's, like, right up my alley. Well, so. that's the thing. is like, I tell you about a lot of games, and, and you know that I have different tastes than you. So what might be cool to me isn't always cool to you. But I think this yeah. is a, a, a game that a lot of people would enjoy. I think it's a game a lot of people should check out. So you guys should head over. It's actually fairly. It's not an expensive game. No, because they're um, they're all getting gearing forward to the sequel. But if you want to get an idea of what the first or the sec- second one, the second one's gonna even be bigger. You'll have companions to fight with you, and yeah. the structure of the worlds is a lot different. Um, there's not a cabinet for champions. There's like a, a world map that you go square to square on. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's 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 really they've gone even further. They've improved it. So, but to get a taste of like the style and the, it the card the card parts pretty much the same. Cool, sounds good. Well, I really enjoyed it, guys. So that is what I've been playing this week. Um, other than Baby Watch, Baby Watch, Baby Watch. Um, so you know the first babies tend to kind of hang out and take their time, right? Yeah, I do. But it's really weird because everything that like um, we learned in our class and like other women have like told us that mm-hmm. like happens like right before they go into labor is, like, progressively, like, happening quicker and quicker. So, not okay. sure. Right. We'll see. All right. I mean, I would be cool with him coming before Christmas, but, like, if it gets up close close to Christmas, I want him to just to chill for a while. Like, I don't want to have a Christmas baby. That would suck. I mean, I'm not trying to have no Jesus, because then I'd have to, like, really tone it down. Right. Yeah. I mean, if I had the next Savior, let's just all admit it, I mean, that would be, I'd probably be the first one to be knocked out. <laughs> I just can't imagine that scenario, Zach. That would be hilarious. Just saying, Tim. Mm-hmm. Might have the power to rule the world. No, not going to happen. No? Okay, well, whatever then. Fine, screw you too. So, you ready to move on to Tech Talk? Let's do some Tech Talk. Alright, let's talk some tech. So, my Christmas present from Tim this year was his... Uh, PlayStation 4 because he upgraded to the PlayStation 4 Pro. So, so that's I'm all really, I played on this week was PlayStation 4. Yes, and I'm really curious to see what you thought of it because obviously you're going down in specs, but the flip side is that there's kind of a different 
flavor of experience on console that I I feel because I've been playing PC quite a bit the last two years and I yeah. like it but um, I don't know like the closed ecosystem of both Xbox and PlayStation have a different feel to them and I'm just curious what you think about the whole situation so going from the PS3 to the PS4 I'll just start off with it is super snappy like the console load time is amazing the getting around the grids, going into the PlayStation Store, back out of the PlayStation Store, into a game, out of a game, switching from music to... I mean, just doing anything on there is super quick, super intuitive, very easy to learn how to do. Um, I really enjoy... Actually, I do am starting to really enjoy the controller now that I've been playing it over at your house, and then now I've been playing it majority of the week, actually, at my house. Um, I... Don't know if it'd be like my preferred. I mean, it's not gonna be my preferred gaming platform. Period. Uh, just because the graphics aren't like terrible or anything, but I definitely don't like the closed closed offness. It's nice that there's like what you love. There's one update button on it. Um, it takes care of updating the games for you. Uh, I don't know. I really enjoy consoles for multiple people um, play. Uh, single player games, probably I'm gonna mainly stick to PC for, mm -hmm. but there's like certain games like Oceanhorn where I just want to kick back on the couch like I did with Wind Waker. And if forgot to mention, I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Oceanhorn reminds me a shit ton of Wind Waker from The Legend of Zelda. Um, graphically, story wise, even kind of as well. Um, you're on a boat, it's really cool. Um, so, games like that that I just want to kick back and relax um, and not have to sit down the whole entire time are going to be console games for me. And I'm excited for it, so. Cool. Yeah, that was awesome. Just so Andrew, you know, my that PlayStation 4 that you have, your PlayStation 4 now, it might be a little faster than a stock PlayStation 4 because I put a hybrid SSD drive in there. I was noticing that it had like a thousand, or like a thousand gigs or something. Like it's like a one terabyte or something in there. No, it's not just one terabyte, but it's also a hybrid drive with a part of it is an SSD. So I would be curious to see what load times were compared to yours. Uh, it might be faster in some situations. Huh. That's very curious. So the Pro did not come with a hybrid drive, huh? No, it did not. And huh. I looked at getting a SSD, but um, yeah. For yeah, the, that's for the, super expensive. I, I wouldn't want anything less than a terabyte, and they're really expensive. So yeah, I just, we can't afford that right now. No. So I, not, the, not in this plug-and-play gamer. Nope, not when I just bought the VR as well. I just had to I had to cut, draw the line somewhere. But I'm glad yeah. you're enjoying it. I hope you continue to enjoy it. And I will. I'm sure I will. And it's already got one leg up on it. It has Amazon Video, which we haven't tried yet. Oh, cool. But I'm assuming that that probably would be the same as, like, streaming... Uh, from my computer, which works sometimes, um, but the problem is that Amazon Video does not play with Android. No. Or Windows. Nope. So. No, it'd be good uh, for you because you're playing the PlayStation 4 in your living room, right? Yep, exactly. So now you have Amazon so, Video in your living room. That's great. Exactly. So I'm excited for that. So thank you very much, Tim. I, uh, I hope that you are as excited about your Christmas present that it will be coming here very soon to you um, as I am about my PlayStation 4. So. All right. so we'll have to wait and see. Cool. All right. So question of the week, guys, is not really a question this week. It's more of a I about shit my pants when I woke up on, what was that, Monday morning? You should see a doctor about that. I know. I, about, I opened up my email. Um, and I don't know if you guys follow us over at Twitter or on our Facebook page, but mainly our Twitter, Tim blew us out of the freaking water this week with his PSX 16 coverage, especially with a couple select game developers that he really enjoyed hanging out with. Um, so I'm going to let Tim talk to you about this a little bit more because this is actually his story, not mine. Well, he was talking to you too, though. Um, we got a. I mean, he was. We got an email from uh, Paul of Madfellows, um, one of the two creators. Two. That's in two people, uh, making this game that I really enjoyed, Arrow, um, which I always get confused. I have to apologize. I was listening to the episode, and I get confused how many A's and E's are in that game. But, <laughs> but it's Arrow. Um, so anyway, he listened to our whole episode, and he gave us a kind of a shout out. Um, Sent us a picture of the uh, double IPA he drank at midnight. At triple IPA. Triple IPA. Okay, you're right, triple, yeah. So it was cool to get a tasty treat uh, toast from a developer of a game I enjoyed. Um, 
that was a nice moment. And uh, I guess we distracted him from his uh, his uh, online Gears clan, of War. his Gears of War clan. So we should uh, probably buy those guys a beer. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just nice to hear from him. Um, sounds like he's uh, wrapping up the game and looking forward to getting it out there. And he was sad that he couldn't make it to PSX. It would have been cool to talk to him. Um, really cool. Maybe we'll get a chance to interview him at some point in the future, but um, even without that, it was just cool to hear from him. Um, just nice to get a little Christmas letter and a beer toast, and it was just nice. It was very nice. It made me very proud and very excited. And so, then if I you're still saw listening tonight, today, Paul, cheers. Yep. Uh, we're about ready to crack open uh, our tasty treats, Paul, so if you want to go get one of those, that'd be a great time to do it. Um, so, quick site news. Um, we are, as we said, on Chapter 8 of the Until Dawn playthrough. Um, if you want to jump in and see the conclusion, the next two weeks will be the time to do that. But yep. more importantly, we are in the holiday season. And that means we give back to our community. Uh, we've got some game codes for you. Yep. Um, I don't know if we have as many physical items this year, do we? Um, you know, let me check on that really quick. Why don't you talk about the rest of the stuff? I believe we do have some physical stuff that's actually going to be being shipped out from a good friend of mine. Okay, so I believe I have at least one Hand of Fate code to give away. Um, we have some Batman uh, Telltale uh, stories uh, to yep. give away for Steam. Got an assortment of other games on Steam to give away. Um, a while back I talked about some indie games that I enjoy, like Sabelle and um, Her Story. I've got some of those titles to give away, some of my personal favorites. I bought some codes for you all with my own money. Um, so hopefully those will go to someone who enjoys those. Um, I am not looking at the list right now, so I don't know what else we have, but I would say we probably have at least a dozen games to give away. Does that sound right? That sounds about right. And as for physical merchandise, guys, we are going to be giving away a DT, a couple DT50 USBs. Okay. Um, we're going to be giving away a Cloud 2, uh, from HyperX. By the way, these are all HyperX, uh, slash Kingston products, so... That's a, that's a headset, the Cloud 2. Yep, the Cloud 2 gaming headset, which is the one I got on my head right now. Um, and a Cloud X, which is one that we gave away not too long ago. Um, so we're going to be giving away those. Um, we might be giving away multiples of the Cloud Xs. I'm not 100% positive. We're still working out the details with them. Um, but I want to give a huge shout out to HyperX and thank you, uh, Shaylin, for all your hard work um, getting us uh, some of these items to give away to our fans. And uh, so, yeah, we're so going to give away a, a couple of USBs and headsets. This will be a really good week to be following us on Twitter at, uh, at Plug and Play Cast. 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 Yep, yep, there you go. And then um, our last week, we will probably, because you're so close to your special delivery, we'll probably record ahead of time our kind of retrospective on the year 2016 with the games of the year. Yeah. And... Um, Hopefully some other content in there as well. But stay tuned for next week for our Christmas episode. It should be a special one. Sounds good. And I think... I think... Uh, are we doing Christmas presents? Beef? I mean, because we're having like the whole family like get together. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, it's we like should, a whole like, well, family bash. Yeah, we're going to have... Uh, we're going to try to record with our family. So that should be interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure. We'll probably get our seats to be the ones that have the best as far as recording. Okay. But you should be able to hear from uh, my daughter, who games a lot, that I've been talking about, and my son, and um, maybe the wives will hide behind the camera, but they'll be there, and okay. uh, we'll have a good time. And uh, Now, now here's my question to you. Uh, can I give your wife my Christmas present in front of the kids? Is that appropriate? You know what I got, her, right? I do, and... Yes. It sounds sounds really bad when the the listeners don't know what it is, but I don't trust your kids because your kids listen to this. So, and I don't know if your wife's gonna listen to this, so I'm not gonna say what it is. But it sounds really bad. But is it appropriate? I mean, it's not appropriate. But um, my kids have good sensibility. They know what is appropriate, isn't appropriate. They will laugh, and that'll be kind of a family thing. Okay, like, sounds they, good. Just they them. they know what to say around the grandparents and what not to say. If that makes sense. Okay. Just want to make sure. I think so. it, yeah, it'd be fun. It'd be a fun thing for her to open on live on the show. Okay, sounds good. Just wanted to make sure. We'll have to explain it though. <laughs> yeah, we will have to explain it on the show. So, um, but I'm ready for a tasty treat. What yeah, me you? too. All right, guys, we'll be right back after this music break. On the 12th day, Chris was my true love gift to me. 12 shooters shooting, 11 hunters hunting, 10 strikers scoring, 9 races racing, 8 exotic end runs, 7 final smashes, 6 props are hiding, 5 points. Pokeballs! Four Enderpearls, three best friends, two assassins, and a collection of Master Chief! 
And we are back. Tasty treats in hashtag no filter. No filter? I don't know. That's what my bottle says. Hashtag no filter fresh. All right. Cool. Yep. So, Tim, kick us off with the tasty treats. Let me taste your treat. Hopefully you hear that. I heard that. I am cracking open a peach pear flavored sparkling water from LaCroix. I just drank one of those during the first half. Well, it's my tasty treat. So I'm still in the six weeks. No calories, no artificial flavors or sweeteners. Sodium free. Can you break that during next week's episode? Yes, it's Christmas, damn it. Okay, cool. I broke it for Thanksgiving. Okay, I'm just making sure because I was thinking about I'm going to go grab us some special tasty treats from... Uh, if there's special store. tasty treats too, I would hate myself for skipping out. So yes, I will break it. Okay, my... cool. So, yeah, it's fine, but it's basically just sparkling water. Gotcha. Why don't you share your actual tasty treat? Okay. Uh, so, I have Stone Unfiltered IPA. The bottle specifically says, enjoy by 1225-16. Okay. This is brewed to enjoy within 37 days. Open before Christmas. And it is by Stone Brewing. Um, I'm trying to find the IBUs. By the way, they're at Stone Brewing Co., uh, it's 9.4 alcohol volume. IBUs, IBUs. So is it just uh, Stone IPA, or is it got a name? Uh, enjoy by 12, 25, 16. I'm assuming it's it's called Unfiltered IPA. Okay. Um, so I'm not seeing the IBUs anywhere on this bottle, so we're just going to go ahead and crack it, guys. Cool. It was bottled on 11 18 16. Oh, wow. So they really don't want you to hang, hang on to it too long. No. All right, we're going to go ahead. Hashtag no filter. Oh, that's a really good one. That's really smooth. Not very hoppy, but... I'm curious what the color is since it's unfiltered. Is it darker than normal? Um, No, actually, it's not. It's actually very... It's not... It's got chunks in it. <laughs> well, unfiltered. Yeah. I mean, I, it's got that growing bacteria shit that you've been drinking, I'm sure. Maybe I wasn't supposed to shake it before. I don't know. Um, no, it's actually about the same color as a like a Shadow Ninja IPA. Mm-hmm. Um, so almost like a yellowish-orange color. But it definitely has chunkies in it. No filter. All right. So don't forget to chew it. You chew your beer. Chew your beer. Oh man, I get totally off topic. I totally heard that they at the Texas State Fair have beer or deep fried beer. What? How can you? Even yeah. Do, how can you even do that? I have no freaking idea. How but I was you, listening to another podcast. And how they can were you like, contain? Yeah. How can you contain the beer in something that could be fried? I I don't know. I call bullshit. Because that's a liquid. You can't... Do you, have you ever seen what happens when you throw water, and beer is basically water, into a fryer? Yeah, doesn't it explode? Pretty much. Like, you would, yeah. have, you would have to have it in something completely contained. So then, is it like a... I don't see how I don't, you... I don't know. How about if you... We head over to our kick it segment. Alright, let's kick and it. And while you kick it, I'm going to look it up. Alright, let's kick it. Okay, so this week I'm actually going to Indiegogo. Um, okay, go, for, go, 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 Power go. Rangers. So, um, we've talked about before the scarcity of the Nintendo um, mini system. What's it called? Yeah, the uh, Classic. I think it's called the Classic. The hand, the, the NES, the size of your hand that has 30 games built in, and you can plug in uh, two controllers and play it's the plug Classic. Plug-and-play friendly. Yep, but you can't find them anywhere. Like, they go on sale, they sell out in like 10 minutes. And people are like waiting for them to for the stores to open that they think are going to have them. It's like one of the. I two... tried that. <laughs> Did you? Which store? I tried Target and Fred Myers. Doesn't work. Yeah, um, I'll buy it next year when it's on clearance and nobody cares anymore. It happens every year. Like there's these you know hot toys. I pe- won't wait that long. People have to have for Christmas. Hatchimals is the other one. 
Oh my god, those... Are, I don't even know what the fuck a Hatchimal is, but it reminds me of the Furby craze all over again. I mean, kind of like that. So there's this lady who bought like $25,000 worth of Hatchimals. Oh, Jesus Christ, she's a millionaire now. No, that's the thing. Like, she thought she was going to be, but like Amazon and eBay cracked down. And they didn't allow you. Oh. They don't allow you to sell more than two a week. <laughs> Ooh. So she's sitting on all these Hatchimals. And... Oh my god! They're selling for like four hundred dollars, like on the Buy Everything Vancouver Facebook page. Well, they're being listed for that. I think the average sell price is actually more like two hundred. It's but still these, crazy. It is crazy. I think they're like thirty or sixty dollar items normally. So several hundred percent markup. But anyway, scarce Christmas toys. You don't want to get the Nintendo. You want some kind. of something like it enter the retro and engine sigma it's a mini console and media player it is a computer basically in a little shell it looks a lot like a sega genesis or sega saturn okay um it's plug and play requires no expertise experience setup comes with um emulators that will run atari vcs 2600 sega genesis nes um i'm seeing uh logos for genesis 32x super nintendo game boy color game boy advance um, so it only comes with a couple games installed where you get the other games to play on it is sort of your business. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll let the little robot lady do a little, um, promo reel for you right now. Introducing Retro Engine Sigma from Toyota. Retro styling, full core processor, and fits in the palm of your hand. USB port accepts any USB controllers. Retro and modern. Micro USB port accepts an adapter for a third controller, a hub, or a Bluetooth dongle. HDMI hookup directly to modern televisions. Comes with a 5 volt power supply which plugs into your wall. The Retro Engine Sigma. Retro Gaming Simplified. Alright, so you heard, uh, sound a lot like the voice of GLaDOS, uh, from, um... Portal. Portal. Why can I not remember that game? I don't know. I've never even played that game. I knew I, that. I simply cannot remember. It's like my brain. It's like the fourth time you mentioned that like, stupid I, robot. That's the reason why I know that. Well, her a lot. No problem. Her voice sounded a lot like it. Um, so, I don't know about the legality of this. I mean, it just has it just has a memory card and the emulators on it. I think not any, any games. But, um, so, I think the cheapest you can get it is... The early bird, which is already gone for forty nine dollars, which was the sixteen gigabyte version. There still is, as we record, um, a sixteen gigabyte set, um, but there's only about a hundred left, and it, it that would come out in May for you. Yeah, but that gigabyte is just a freaking micro USB card, so, so all you have to do is put a new one in and get whatever size you want. Right. So I would get the cheaper version instead of paying more. Right. Like, like this. The. Uh, I think, where does it go, up to 89 or something? Yeah, it goes up to 89. I'm just looking at it. I almost pulled the trigger on it and then realized, man, I'll wait for the Nintendo. Well, or it's, it's sort of a build different... my own. Okay, so here's, a, here's, a, here's a better list of what it will run, allegedly. Amstrad, which is a system I've never heard of. Atari 2600, a 20, Atari 7800, Atari ST, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Gear, Atari Lynx, MAME, MSX, Nintendo 64... Nintendo Entertainment System, Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, PC Engine, Commodore 64, PlayStation, SG-1000, Super Nintendo, 32X, Sega CD, Sega Genesis, Sega Master System, uh, Vutrex or Vetrex, Sinclair, yeah, so a lot of older systems you can run on mm. it. It comes with, uh, in the back, one HDMI slot and one uh, power outlet thing. There's two uh, USBs in the front, one on the back. Um, like we mentioned in a micro SD card. So, simple little device. Get one for about 60 bucks, 
Um, look it up. Bad. Look it up in Indiegogo if you're interested. Indiegogo runs a lot longer than uh, Kickstarter, so they've got still like another month to go. Um, they were asking for originally twenty thousand dollars. They're already up to three hundred sixty-two thousand um, dollars. So it's definitely backed. Um, they're just basically taking orders at this point. So that's the Retro en Engine at Sigma, kind of a kind of a weird name to remember unless you think R E S Retro Engine Sigma. So N E S. R-E-S. That's weird. Yep. So, All yep. right. You ready to learn about this uh, deep fried beer? Uh, yes, I need to be convinced. All right, guys. Deep fried beer invented in Texas. So what this is, Tim, to put your mind at ease, is the beer is placed inside of a pocket of salty pretzel-like dough and then dunked in oil at 375 degrees for about 20 seconds, a short enough time for the confection to remain alcoholic when the diner takes a bite of the hot beer mixes takes a bite the hot beer mixes with the dough and what cl is claimed to be a delicious taste sensation inventor mark zabel said it had taken him three years to come up with a cooking method and a patent for the process is pending he declined to say whether any special ingredients were involved his deep fried beer will be officially unveiled in a food or a fried food competition at the Texas State Fair later this month. Um, and by the way, this has already happened because this article was wrote a while ago. Um, five ravioli-like pieces will sell for $5, and the Texas Alcoholic Commission has already ruled that people must be the age over 21 to try it. Yeah, you think? Um, Mark Zabel said, Nobody has been able to fry a liquid before. It tastes like you took a bite of a hot pretzel dough. And then took a drink of beer. Mr. Zabel previously invented dishes including chocolate covered strawberry waffle balls and jalapeno corn dog shrimps. Last year's winner of the Texas State Fair fried food competition was a recipe for deep fried butter. Mm. See, deep fried butter isn't quite liquid. I'm impressed if he's actually able to fry liquid. He did. This is done. I mean, I heard that like the person that went to this Texas State Fair, this is the thing. I believe what won, or it was like this like crazy sideshow that like was there because he was like talking about it and they talked about the deep fried butter and he was like he's from Texas and he was like oh I went to Texas State Fair and there was a dude deep frying beer. Hmm. Yeah. Freaking weird. That's very weird. So what's your uh, kick it getting back on track? All right. So I have Benchy. The first smart headphones with artificial intelligence. And I'm going to go ahead and let the developers just kind of talk about this for a second. Introducing Vinci, the first smart headphones that understand you. It goes way beyond just playing music. Vinci is a smart on-the-go device controlled by your voice and powered by AI technology. Hey Vinci, play Psych Rock. Playing to your wagon by Hello Ocho. With Vinci, all you have to do is ask. It is powered by far field voice recognition software. Hey Vinci, what's the weather looking like tonight? Clear skies and 85 in Atlanta. Vinci syncs across your different platforms so that it can update you on your schedule and notifications and anticipate your needs. Also, your usual connecting bus is running a little behind. Would you like me to find an alternative route? It's okay, I'll just take an Uber. Of course, crawling an Uber to King Memorial Station. Estimated arrival time 12 minutes. With Vinci, your headphones are now your personal assistant, your search engine, your phone, and so much more. Call from Brian Campbell. Thanks, Vinci. Go ahead, put him through. Hey, Brian. Did you decide on flowers for the reception? Okay, yeah. That shouldn't be a problem. Thanks. Mm hmm. Bye. Hey, Vinci? What's a protea? A protea is a genus of South African flowering plants, also called sugar bushes. Okay, Vinci. Sounds like I need to visit a specialized flower shop. Are there any nearby? Patricia's imported perennials is 3.1 miles away. Awesome. Can you direct me there? Head east on Pine Street toward 99 Centennial Avenue. Vinci's location-based services means that you're receiving relevant local recommendations without lifting a fingertip. Vinci is the perfect companion. 
It learns from your heart rate, activity, and preferences to better understand and suggest the perfect song for the moment. Hey, Vinci, what's my average running speed and heart rate? Your average running speed is 5.2 miles per hour. Heart rate is currently 110 beats per minute. Okay, Vinci. Vinci's local storage and 3G coverage means you don't have to carry your phone. It's just you and Vinci on the go. How about I play your workout playlist from Spotify? Perfect. Vinci's running mode helps keep you safe by transmitting external noise over your music. Please activate running mode. Not only does Vinci sound great, its 3D sound recording technology captures and reimburses you in your favorite audio activities. The more you use it, the more it learns from you. Vinci makes intelligent recommendations based on your activities, listening habits, location, and preferences. Hey, Vinci, is Oyaki still delivering? Yes, for the next 45 minutes. Perfect. Place my usual order. Done. There is a new episode of This American Life. Would you like to listen? You know what, Vinci? It sounds perfect. With wireless charging and long-lasting battery, you can be sure Vinci will be there from the second you get up till the moment you go to sleep. Hey, Vinci. Good night. Good night. So as you guys just heard, Vinci is 50% off at only $99 on Kickstarter. Um, but those are already all gone. So kind of sucks for you. Mm -hmm. But Vinci is a reinvented headphones, which kind of got drew my attention. Um, they have standalone hi-fi music player, up to 32 gigabytes storage, fitness tracker and heart rate monitor, which is weird to think that they can track your heart rate in your head, because, yeah, anyways, whatever. Um, voice control your music, gesture interface, which is like a touch screen on the side of the ear, which is awesome, 3D sound recording, and active noise canceling. Um, so they're going to be, like I said, starting at $99. That's gone. Um, it seems really cool. Um, I'm trying to think of other things to say about this other than, like, it's it's just such a big headset. I don't know what I'd do with it. Mm -hmm. And the battery life probably isn't going to be long enough for me. But this is really cool for somebody who really wants to, like you, Tim, turn their body into artificial intelligence. You can turn whatever you want on this uh, headset, on this Vinci. Um, you know, you listen to your music, listen to whatever you want. I like the direction um, it's going. It seems like the first generation of maybe a idea that will be fleshed out in the future. Exactly. It's very innovative. Um it was new. I've never seen anything like this on Kickstarter before. Mm -hmm. um, and if I was like a person that didn't already have a headset like this and I didn't have a job where I listened to podcasts 10 hours a day or more um, and I only went to the gym, this would probably be like something right up my alley. It looks really cool. The earpieces, you know, if you think of our gaming headsets, I don't know what you're, which one you're wearing right now, Tim, but imagine the Cloud 2, mm -hmm. which I have on my head. Right. And where it has the HyperX logos on the side is touchscreen, okay. and you can program whatever you want on the side of those. So like eyeballs that like roll around, <laughs> different beats that go to the beat of your music. Mm -hmm. um, it it's really cool. So they were looking for fifty thousand U.S. dollars. They have six hundred sixteen thousand three hundred forty-seven with three thousand two hundred eighty-three backers eight days ago. So it's well overfunded. Um, the cheapest you can get in on it right now would be $129, which is the early bird, and that's still very good pricing. Um, the Kickstarter Special Edition, um, which is going to be black, white, silver, or red, is going to be $149, jumping all the way down to the most expensive one, which is surprisingly only $299, is the Cyber Week Vinci Pro Couple Special. Um, if you previously backed our Vinci Pro Black, don't worry. You will have the choice of white or yellow. We simply wanted to edit this tier to show all our color options. So it's black, white, or yellow, and you get two of them. 
for two hundred ninety nine dollars. So about a hundred dollars off. Um, oh no, yeah, yeah, about a hundred dollars off. Um, 3D sound, guys. It looks amazing. I mean, it does look really cool. I'm not gonna lie. It looks fun. It looks cool. It looks innovative. Um, and it can cancel noises down to 28 decibels. Um, so I'm not really sure what that means. That's fairly quiet, I think. I think it's pretty so, quiet. So it would cancel a lot of noise. Yeah. So it looks fun. It's innovative. It looks futuristic. And uh, yeah, I kind of like it. It has RAM built into it, which is awesome. It has 1 gig of RAM built into it. Huh. Um, I'm actually trying to see how long they're claiming the battery will last. Hold on one second. It's not going to hit your 10 hours if it's got an LED screen on the side. Nope. Charging time. Oh, charging time. Bluetooth playback, 50 hours. Standalone playback, 10 hours. Um, so, what? Standalone. Standby time of three weeks. I don't know. They say that it's going to last me up to 50 hours. I doubt it. But, you know, maybe someday. The only other piece is I can only have one of your butt in at a time at work for safety reasons for um, OSHA. So go fuck yourself, OSHA, and moving on. Says the guy with a history of uh, workplace accidents. <laughs> All right, so moving on to game news. We've got, um, speaking of uh, at the workplace, so this guy embezzled from his job um, almost $5 million. Wait, 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 you're not supposed to do that? No, 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 not really. So Wait, what's embezzling again? This guy uh, taking money from your boss. You're not but, supposed to do that. Unless it's in your paycheck. Nope. Kevin Lee Coe, a 45-year-old man from Rockland, California, pled guilty to charges of wire fraud and money laundering, having been caught stealing $4.8 million from his dollar. $4.8 million the fuck? from his employer between 2008 and 2015. He used to work in the accounting department of Holt of California, um... He spent most of the money on stuff like furniture, cars, NBA season tickets, but he also spent... Hey, 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 hold on. I don't blame the guy for that part, except for but, they have shitty teams up there. Right. He also spent around $1 million on one game, oh, which, God. Was, which was called Game of War. <laughs> That's a tits game. <laughs> so, if hey, we've made fun of this game before. If you don't remember, this is the game that had... It's kind of a Clash of Clans knockoff. That featured some Kate Upton commercials, oh, that's and just right, to re just to refresh favorite. your memory, let's go ahead and play about thirty seconds of one of them right now. The thing about empires, the bigger you build them, the more your enemies want to knock them down. Let them have their fun. You and I will revisit them soon enough. Do you want to come and play? Game of War. Play for free now from the App Store. <laughs> All right, so that was Kate Upton uh, wanting to play with you, and <laughs> for one million dollars. So yeah, for one million dollars, I'm Kate thinking he could have got the actual Kate Upton to play with him no at some shit. level. Um, she could have at least gone on a date with him. I, he could have done so much. Uh, it just blows my mind. This guy. So, so wait, hold on. Does it say who his employer was? Yeah, Holt of California. Um, yeah, what the hell is Holt of California? I don't know. Um, he was in the accounting department. He obviously should not have been in the accounting department. How's the hold? H O L T. Um, so he pled guilty. March 2017, he'll be sentenced. The maximum penalty for fraud in California is 20 years in prison and a $250,000 oh, $250, fine. And money laundering carries a similar maximum penalty of 20 years in jail and a fine of $500,000. He probably won't serve that much time. Um, but, I mean, just wow. Just so you know, they all they do is rental equipment on, uh, like, forklifts, power equipment, trucks, construction equipment, and agricultural equipment. And apparently they have a terrible accounting department. Apparently. So, hopefully the rest of the people at Holt will still be employed after losing that much money to this douchebag. Jesus. Spending, can you imagine spending a million dollars on a mobile game? I can't, but how the hell did can you Can you imagine being was... able to spend a million dollars. The fact that he could, the fact that there was things for him to buy up to a million dollars. That's insane I, to me. I, like, I mean, how like what's is your, he what's not your, like what's your, the world champion? What's your favorite, what's War. your favorite video game that has DLC? Oh my God. Uh, 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 I don't know. Well, let's just say for giggles, 
Elder Scroll Online. How much do you think? You oh spent? yeah, yeah, yeah. I like buying shit for that. You. How much? That. Yeah, because you spent fifteen dollars on a stupid wolf. <laughs> if you spent, you. if you bought, cool. if you bought every, if you bought literally everything, how much do you think you could spend? If I bought everything. Yeah, like all the wolves, all of the armors, all of the whatevers you can buy. <laughs> Sadly, maybe like seven hundred dollars. Yeah, maybe? so let's say a thousand even. Let's say you could actually spend a thousand dollars. You're gonna give me a thousand dollars for Elder Scrolls Online. I really like you. <laughs> okay, but this guy somehow spent a million dollars on a mobile. <laughs> go- One million dollars. All right. How the fuck do you spend a million dollars? I don't know. On we- game of this guy has to have like the best game of war account. It's if- worth a million dollars. And he's probably got like a shitty iPhone four too. That's the thing. Anyway, oh my God. moving on. Um, speaking... And no Kate, Kate Upton. That just is depressing. <laughs> she didn't even get that money. Like she, I know, right? She got paid. She, for the, got... she got paid for the commercial and moved on with her life. And she. I like... sure as I hope she got paid over a million dollars because that's the reason why this guy was at it. <sighs> just sad. Okay, moving on. Like I said, speaking of large numbers, over fifty-seven hundred players gathered over last weekend to destroy a massive player-made structure in EVE Online. Oh, Jesus Christ. Not another one of these. I love these stories. Making it the largest single engagement in game history. It's uh, now in its 14th year. EVE's Online. Um, yeah, like over the weekend, one of the most successful mercenary factions called Pandemic Legion concluded a months-long assault on a region of space controlled by another in-game faction known as the Circle of Two, or CO2 for short. Um, their main objective was destruction of a Keep Star Citadel. A tremendously expensive player built defense position that was introduced in Eve's April update. So there's like this giant structure, kind of like a Death Star, but it's called a Keep Star. Um, they're over 160 kilometers tall, cost billions in in game currency. They pack a potent super weapon that's particularly dangerous to larger capital ships. So they are a lot like the Death Star. Um, so you can watch the entire battle on a Twitch, Twitch stream, but it was several hours, so they're. There's also YouTube clip videos. Um, I'm trying to read how many hours it did take. But it was multiple hours, like a coordinated attack, 5,700 players. And some of the shorter YouTube clips are pretty cool to watch. Just, like, just explosions and laser flares everywhere. And I could never get into EVE Online, but I love hearing about stories like this where there's these giant clans coordinating and fighting in this virtual space. Dude, this goes... So freaking far beyond just online stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. These people are like calling each other throughout the day. No, no. This is like one clan flew over to Russia, went to the main power breaker of that neighborhood, snipped the fucker so he couldn't get online, and flew back over to their country, wherever the fuck they were from, and like destroyed his ships. Yeah. Like these people are freaking crazy. I know, but I love hearing the stories. I would oh watch my God. I would watch a movie like a documentary about Eve Online, like in a heartbeat. Just to see these crazy guys and like what they will go to 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 like maneuver this fake economy. But they're spending real money on this fake economy. Like lots of money. <laughs> like millions of US dollars, I'm sure. Oh yeah. So yeah. Like that guy's game of war account is nothing compared to this. Yeah, yeah, but that's just one guy and one Stupid mobile game. This is a bunch of people coordinating together. It's very true. I guess you got a point there. So, I don't know. It's interesting to me. Um, so, moving on to game releases. Yep. Moving on to game releases. Monday, December 12th, Bastion, Xbox One. Finally. Tuesday. Because I think Bastion's like a two or three year old game. Yeah, I've had it on Steam, but never played it. So, uh, that's how it works on Steam. Yep. December 13th, Stardew Valley, PS4, Xbox One. I'd love to get that on PS4 if I could. Bridge Constructor, PS4. Drive, 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 PS4. I've got that coming. Vice, PS4. I got that. Her... Do you? Yeah. Oh, yes, you do. That's yeah, one yeah. of the games I was playing. Her Majesty Spiffing, PS4. I expect you to die, PS4 VR. Wait, PSVR. Uh, Little Acre, PS4. Perfect, PS4. Trove, PS4. December 16th. Space Hulk Deathwing. Cool title. PC. That's a really cool title. So I actually want to check out the Little Acre. It's a point and click adventure, but it looks like you're playing a cartoon. Like a, it looks really? cool. It looks cool. Yeah, there's an article about it on the button smashers.com. You can check it out if you're interested. Nice, uh, nice shout out there. Yep. 
Guilty Gear XRD Revelator PC. December 15th, Super Mario Run iOS. Oh, fuck me. So, Don, I'm thinking yeah. of like getting a $10 iTunes card and putting it on one of my kids' iPads. I don't know if I can wait for the Android version. I don't think it's going to come to Android, to tell you the truth. Ever? I don't think so. Hmm. That would suck. I think that Nintendo might have these exclusive titles wrapped up in Apple. That would suck. They were doing preview events at the Apple stores with Super Mario Run earlier this week before it comes out. Yep. So you might, you might be right. Don Brandon Cricket 17 PS4 Xbox One. I really hope I don't get that. Fat <laughs> City VR. What the fuck? I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Fat City VR. PSVR. Tim and I will be playing that after we're done with uh, Until Dawn. Magnet Knights. PS4. Mal Dilta. Mal Dildo. Castilia. <laughs> EX. PS4. Motor Strike Immortal Legends. PS4. Another cool title. Pick Cross E7. What the fuck? I don't know. 3DS. And then there's an invisible title here. Yep. It's uh, whatever you want it to be. So, guys, this week's question, um, as always, is what are you hoping to get for this holiday season? If you've been a good little girl or boy, what is on your Christmas wish list? We'll be asking the same question next week. It's a two-week question. But, I mean, we unless might, we get something cooler. We might ask next week what their game of the year is. That would oh, be, that's that'd be, that'd very be a true. Good question. Yeah, that's so a that's, good question for next what's, week. Uh, spoiler, in case you know what next week says. So, guys, this week's question is, if you're a good girl or boy, what is the item that you'd want for Christmas? So, until next week, guys, don't forget to check us out at facebook.com forward slash plug and play gamer, or plug and play show, sorry, facebook.com forward slash, God, this beard is strong, facebook.com forward slash plug and play show, YouTube, Instagram, nope, youtube.com forward slash plug and play gamer. Instagram and YouTube. No fucking goddamn it. <laughs> Twitter and Instagram at fucking Playcast. And until next week, don't forget to.